Hey, good morning, everybody. Today's date is September 1st, 2017, and my name is Leslie Williams. Okay, now, I'm going to have to talk fast in this video because i got a lot to say, and i got very limited time to do it. Now, before I move on and move forward and uh, unpack the subject matter, I have to make an initial prediction, just in case. And it, uh, I make predictions in order, it's a strategy that I use for security purposes, and to uh, attempt to utilize as a mechanism of evidence, for instance, if anything that I predict comes true, okay, I then take that current evidence and fold it onto everything else that I have predicted that has come true. And pretty much 98% of everything that has happened to me has been predicted in either email files, tweets on Twitters, videos uh, on YouTube, Periscope, and so on and so forth. So if anybody approaches me while I'm on this property, at any time I'm on this property in the next 72 hours from this literal second forward, it will absolutely and completely be directly connected to gang stalking. And that means anybody of any age, any type of person, no matter what they say within 100 feet of me and or in my direct physical presence, it will be nothing but a staged event. And when staged events are brought about as a result of being a gang stalking victim, what gang stalking perpetrators will do is tell the individuals that they use for the event what to say and how to act and what to do and what not to do. And the reason why that is done is because, one, that's how gang stalking operates, and two, because they know they're dealing with an individual that has tape recorders and video cameras. I have stated in over hundreds of my videos on YouTube and Periscope that I wear a running recording tape recorder on me at all times. And since cyber surveillance, all the targeted individuals' internet activity is monitored by the very perpetrators who perpetrate these criminal realities, then I think it's reasonable that we can at least suspect is your internet activity being monitored by the perpetrators who are perpetrating this crime towards the target in order to be able to see how the target is responding to the previous crimes that are happening to them and the current ones that, are, uh, uh, that the target is enduring that they're perpetrating. Now, you can go to YouTube and type in gang stalking, bullying on steroids, and you'll flat out see that a, even a police officer states this crime has reached out into the cyber world. Okay? Sorry about the background noise. Okay? And it's all over the internet being exposed by tens of thousands, by tens of thousands of targets of this crime, that their internet activities and their are being monitored by the perpetrators, that their email accounts are hacked, blog accounts are hacked, YouTube accounts are hacked, phones hacked, computers hacked, and so on. All this can be Googled to gang stalking. So that's why I state when I do in my prediction that if anybody comes on this property, no matter what they say within 100 feet of me and or in my direct physical presence, they will be, they will be tailored scripts in order to deflect the, mo uh, the transparency of the motive of the event. They'll either act crazy so the police can say, well, what do you expect, Leslie? They got issues. Uh, or, or what do you expect, Leslie? They're no neighborhood troublemakers. Uh, or if they act like they're just criminals, the police will say, well, they're just, they're just criminals with records. Okay. Uh, or if there's somebody who's uh, playing out a skit where they act like they got issues, okay, they'll say, well, this individual is obviously acting uh, like they got issues, so that was the reason why they did what they did. They will dress up and camouflage the actual intent of why they're approaching the target, including acting nice. Okay. Because you got to understand in gang stalking, one of the goals of gang stalking is to distract you mentally with what they do, either verbally and or physically. So <coughs> it was qu totally quiet before I started making this video. Anyways, they will distract you in order to gain that those very seconds to approach you while they're distracting you. And this is done so you're not thinking about what you should do as a result of them distra uh, of them approaching you. In other words, they'll, they'll act nice like they're just approaching you to ask you for directions or ask you if you got a cell phone charger or ask you if you uh, have any change or anything like that. And they'll act nice verbally. But this is being done in order to, again, camouflage their intent concerning why they're in their physical presence why they're approaching you as they're talking to you. It's a the, the verbal the verbal statements are not just done to camouflage their intent, okay? Because they know <coughs> the ones who are using them know I wear a tape recorder. <coughs> but it's also done to distract the target mentally, so they can try and reorientate the target's um, situational awareness pertaining to how the target actually knows why they're there. 
So what they're trying to do is tie the target up in, in the current deliberations of what to do, what not to do, and 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 causing the target to... The goal is to basically distract the target mentally and physically so they can gain traction and, and approach the target's direct physical proximity so when they start really acting out, okay, by using bizarre excuses why they are, they can be right directly in that target's physical presence for that altercation. So uh, that's one of the additional motives concerning why I make predictions about who might approach me on properties at wooded areas that I'm at, whether I'm making a video or not, because I do make predictions in my tape recorder as well when I'm alone. Now, I know that was a lot lot to swallow, but it's it's prudent, okay, and it's, and it's, and it's wise, okay, to learn from experience, to learn from the educated knowledge that is extracted from the research, okay, concerning this crime, so we can then uh, make informed decisions about what to do, what not to do, and so on and so forth. Now, so, now, you can also go to Google and type in gang stalking and police. Now, the fact that they're involved in this crime, which is extremely sad, but it, 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 it's prudent, again, it's very prudent for human beings to realize that if they're a victim of a crime, and it's prudent for us to try and figure out what all is involved in it, okay? So we can make informed decisions about what to do to protect ourselves and our property. So at any time, you can go to Google and research extensively gang stalking and police. Look at how many Google generated responses come up, YouTube it as well, and then research the blogs and the information that comes up concerning it. Not just from the target individuals who are stating it, but also from researchers as well. Okay. Now, my fellow American citizens, one of the main methodologies of gang stalking crimes is to commit crimes around the target that are meant for the target to experience mentally in order to mentally harass a target, in order to keep that target in a non-stop victimized mindset, in order to keep the gang stalking campaign alive in the conscious forefront of the target's daily experiences everywhere they go, every chance they can, that they can do it. But what they're literally doing though, 80% of the community-based harassment is being perpetrated around the target and towards the target through and through through and by, but not limited to, Duke community members. And I'd say another 10% are through uh, social deviants, punks, criminals, homeless people, crazies, and people who can be bought off, who don't give two shits about what they do to anybody. And then the remaining amount are syndicate members. Now, why is it that you can go to Google and type in the name of any 10 well-known well businesses in the United States? And as an example, you can type in Walmart and gang stalking. Uh, let's see, what else? What do we got? What do we got? Taco Bell and gang stalking. McDonald's and gang stalking. The name of any well-known bank and gang stalking. Uh, ba -dee, ba -dee, ba -dee, ba -dee, ba -dee. Let's see, what else do we got? We got Burger King and gang stalking. Uh, Macy's and gang stalking. Sports Authority. So, you know, you, you know that you can write down the name of any 10 or 12 well-known businesses in the United States. Okay, es especially as well grocery stores and coffee shops. And type that into gang stalking and extensively research what comes up, look at how many Google generated responses come up, and then, and then when you research it, if there's anything that you don't understand, pay attention to my following statement. When you open up the blogs pertaining to what targets are stating they're experiencing in these four mentioned places, what you need to do is take what they're saying, like say if a person is saying that individuals are being propped up at entrances and exits, just Google that to Gangstalk. It's totally amazing that right before I started making this video, okay, there was no noise going on at all. Okay, flat out. All right, so the best way to research what I'm exposing is to first investigate gang stalking in reference to how it operates. And the second is to take the details and the descriptions that you take from the research from gang stalking victims and individuals who are exposing this crime. And then take those descriptions and then keyword them into gang stalking. So you can see that the methodologies that victims are stating they're experiencing are factual realities because gang stalking operates on, but not limited to, a template of protocols, of methods, tactics, techniques, maneuvers, okay, in order to achieve results and effects so those results and effects can then be monopolized on. Excuse me. The goal at the end of the day is exploitation. Now, 
a few days ago, I made a video on Periscope, clearly wide openly state that the California Attorney General's Office has on their website, at least, at least they did back in 2013 and 14 when I investigated it, had on their website some information concerning that, that they, that they and even local law enforcement has developed a program where if any business suspects that a human trafficking target is within that business, they are to call, okay, the police and or the California Attorney General if they have subscribed, if they have enrolled in this program. Now, so why is it then that you can go to Google and research businesses, the name of any type of business, restaurants, movie theaters, um, uh, 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 grocery stores, uh, coffee shops, and gang stalking, and look at how many responses that come up, okay? Then go to Google and type in gang stalking and human trafficking. Then go to Google and type in gang stalking and police. So, if police are supposed to be protecting you from human tra tra trafficking targeting, if businesses are supposed to be working in concert with the main law enforcement agency of the state and notifying them in reference to them witnessing anything that might cause a red flag to appear in their minds concerning a, a person who might be targeted with human trafficking, if they're supposed to contact law enforcement and the California Attorney General concerning these observations, then why is it then that businesses are involved in gang stalking? Why is it that the police are involved in gang stalking? And why is uh, the California Attorney General, the District Attorney of San Diego, and the San Diego Police and other police departments in the state of California all over the internet to be directly implicated to be playing a direct role in gang stalking crimes? And why is gang stalking all over the internet to be directly connected to human trafficking? Now, when we put this together in my mind, in your mind, which you will be able to do through research, connect the dots, you will be able to obviously conclude that this is nothing but a scheme, okay? It's a, it's basically misdirection, okay? So let me, let me, let me give me a, a hold on a minute. Now, I'm going to backtrack and set, set aside what I just stated for a minute because I got to interject this before I forget to, okay? Yesterday I made a video and I incorporated within that video a tweet link in the title of the Periscope video. The same tweet link Okay, or it, or at least the um, I believe it's the same tweet link or the same information that's in that tweet link is the same information that's in the tweet link that I incorporated within the title of this Periscope video. If it's if they're different videos, if it's a different tweet link, it doesn't matter because you can also bring that tweet link up as well as a result of you going into this Periscope account and bringing up the video that was broadcasted right before this one, the one that's right below this in the profile of my account, the Periscope account. In that video, I stated that a Vons grocery store for Friars and Frazzy Road, Friars Mission Center, I had to call the police, the San Diego police, and told them that their employees were saying gang stalking. It wasn't Vons, it was Rouse. Then I stated that as a result of me then moving to La Jolla, and then I went to Vons in La Jolla and caught it being said on tape, and then as it's being caught, I'm asking employees the address, that was not Vons, that was Rouse. It was a second Rouse that was caught after I had reported the same crime about a previous Vons, okay, at least two months before. So I think the reason why I did that was because the main subject matter of that video was about Vons. I had already stated Vons several times in the, um, in the video before I got to that point in the video. And so I guess it was just a Freudian slip. Uh, it was just a slip of the tongue. So when you go to that video, that's why I stated in the title of this Periscope video that this is an addendum video to that one, okay? Because I want you to be able to understand that you, you would have been able to figure it out once you opened up the tweet link and followed the directions that I gave in that video. You would obviously have been able to see that it was Ralph's being exposed, but I also wanted to make sure that you understand that I always knew that it was Ralph's, of course, uh, and that it was just a slip of the tongue. So, my fellow American citizens... About two and a half weeks ago, oh, by, let me just get back and finish the tail end of what I was stating before. Now, as a direct result of me exposing that in a Periscope video pertaining to how the California Attorney General's Office has on their website concerning how businesses who have signed up for this program concerning them, if they observe any suspected human trafficking or targeted human trafficking in their stores, they're supposed to call the police immediately and, and even them if they wish to do so. Now, so... Ever since I made that video, the gang stalking staged events 
the mental provocations, have they begun in Vaughn's off our Regents Road in Arabia Street? Is any gang stalking occurring towards a specific target in the UPS right next to that store? In La Jolla, California. Now, my fellow American citizens, pay close attention to these following statements. About three weeks ago, I made a statement in my blog, and it's still in there, stating that from now on, I'm going to literally state where I am at, and that as a result, you can come in, if you're observing my blog, like on a daily basis or every two days, you can observe my blog that, see, when you go into a WordPress blog and you update it, like say if you put a, put a, put a new paragraph in it, and then you press the update button, once you do that and it gets and what you put in it gets saved, that means when anybody who might be following the blog, okay, through Google, and if they open it up in real time, they can see where you're at because in that paragraph that I updated, I stated, like, like let's just say, for instance, today I'm going to the Coffee Bean and Tea Leaf off of Governor Road and Genesee Avenue. From there, I'll be going to Carl's Jr., and then from there, I'll be going to Vons. Okay? Now, let's just say, for instance... Let's just say if gang stalk and suck dick and suck my dick and gang stalk and oh my god is being said around any gang stalking victim while I'm in there. If it's said, it should get caught on my tip recorder. If it's said and somebody who's following my blog sees the update that I am in there and that you can come in with your tape recorder and try and catch it yourself as a result of the cyber surveillance, the perpetrators cyber surveilling what you're doing. They can see that this new feature, this new technique that the target is employing, has been initiated. Hold on. Now, this crime does not have the manpower. It does not have the police manpower as well to monitor every single person that will intermittently access that blog to see what's going on in real time, pertaining to who's who might be accessing it. I don't even know if that's possible, but it, it could be, I guess. Okay. The point being is that when anybody comes into a coffee shop or a grocery store or a, 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 or, or a library or a university campus where it targets at, and then they blend in with that environment by going in to buy coffee, by going in to buy groceries, okay? If they go into that establishment with a tape recorder, like their phone, and their tape recorder picks it up, that's an uncontrollable witness, one that they cannot even identify in real time. You understand? Now, that takes away their control from this problem, from what they're doing. Because w another added thing that is done to gang stalking victims is that gang stalking victims, 70% of tens of thousands of victims all over America are women. Human trafficking. You understand? Yeah. So, they know they got the, the woman isolated socially. They know they got the, ice, uh, the target completely alone. So they believe they, they can just do everything they want to do against the target in, incrementally over time until they achieve their objective. But if there's any witnesses that they don't even know are witnesses, that they don't even know are witnesses to in real time harassment, and that witness ever comes forward in the future or ever directs any type of, of evidence that they discovered, possibly through and to the law firm that the target was able to get a hold of, okay, because the target, they, see, if I get a hold of a lawyer, I'm going to absolutely update my blog and say that, yes, I was finally able to <coughs> connect with a law firm. If anybody who has ever caught any evidence sees that I have finally found a lawyer, they can easily anonymously send that evidence to that lawyer, or even not anonymously. In other words, it's an uncontrollable situation for these filthy maggots. Now, the businesses that are involved in the gang stalking of me know they're involved in it, and the only thing they care about is protecting themselves from criminal prosecution, okay, and civil liability. So they will absolutely do anything and everything to bait the target to act. Without mental. Targets using too many napkins, claiming the target's being too loud, claiming the target burped, uh, claiming the target made a mess in the bathroom, or propping up people to make false complaints or accusations. Absolutely. These are all classic techniques of gang stalking crimes. So they can then use these excuses to ban the target. They then believe that that will be the last thing, okay, uh, that they'll ever have to deal with concerning that target. Okay. So I know this sounds a little bit interesting, but you got to understand when filthy maggots are attempting to perpetrate a crime against you, 
they gotta hide their intent, okay? They gotta be able to try and and uh, uh, their best to make sure that no other witnesses for the target have been made available. Why do you think they're isolating victims? Do you understand? Think about that real hard. Just like an abusive spouse will isolate their partner they're abusing. They'll take away the credit cards, the cell phone. The, they'll ruin friendships. They'll ruin family relationships because they want that victim in that home to suffer sexual exploitation, physical exploitation, slavery, okay, you name it. The only way a person can achieve that is by taking away the resources the target has and isolating the victim from so, uh, so, uh, social relationships and from even law enforcement because law enforcement is all over the internet being exposed by tens of thousands of victims all over America, people who have never talked to each other. So today I'm going to the Coffee Bean and Tea Leaf on Governor Road and Genesee Avenue. I am gang stalked at MTS bus routes on MTS bus uh, stops. I am gang stalked to my, am I gang stalked to my bank, Wells Fargo? In the last 31 days, I have heard three separate threats in the last 31 days, I have heard three separate threats set around me as my name was being said. Did she really expect to get paid next month? That's a classic technique of gang stalking. It's done to anchor fear and form them. And then, and then, it, and then they said gang stalk. Now, the reason why they do this is because they want you to know they're classically conditioning your thinking. They're trying to instill fear about your finances being co-opted through normal appearance reasons or not. And then what they'll do after they repeat these threats over time, they'll actually engage in it. Use a normal appearance excuses like identity theft or that Social Security did something wrong or whatever. Now, you can research Social Security and gang stalking, Social Services and gang stalking, the police and gang stalking, the government and gang stalking, and banks and gang stalking. It's a nationwide organized crime syndicate in the government, absolutely at every level. So, my fellow American citizens, I'm going to Bonds today off of Governor and Genesee. I'm going to the Coffee Bean and Coffee Bean. Bean and Tea Leaf, which is a coffee shop right in the same parking lot as that Bonds. The Coffee, Bean, and Tea Leaf. First, I got to go to the um, UTC Plaza once I get to UTC. I'll be going to that plaza. I mind my own business and do not bother a soul. Okay, I'm going to go there, take care of some business. I'm going to go directly from there to the, two o to the 41 bus stop and or the 105 bus stop at UTC to take that bus to Genesee and Governor. We're going to see if anybody starts acting wild and crazy around me at any bus stop, walking route, okay, bus route, okay, where I lock up my bikes and in any business, and in, including the bathrooms. We're going to see if I get banned from any place today. We're going to see if anybody fucks with my bike and or bike lock. That includes all functions of it, from the chain to the lock to the gears to the brakes to the tires, everything, okay. What you got to understand is that a huge aspect of this crime is about mentally attempting to, to attempt to intentionally mentally provoke the target to act out verbally and or physically. My tape recorder is running on me. Whether gang stalk and suck my dick is caught on it today or not, okay? Trust me, it will start being said around me again. Now the police have already filed falsified documentation about this fact that this is being propped up around me because they know the campaign is going to continue in reference to the perpetrators. They know it's going to continue, and the goal is to stage events. The police will be called by anybody. They come out. They'll say, what happened? Okay. They'll say, well, she thinks she's being gang stalked. And in order to defend myself, I'll tell the truth about what's actually occurring. Now, the police know they've already filed a falsified police report concerning my complaints about people saying gang stalk and oh my God, and gang stalk and suck my dick. And so what they did was they stated in the police report, Miss Williams thinks that people are getting around her and talking about gang stalking. Do you have any idea how stupid that is? Okay. Why would I say something like that when I know that it's not what's going on? Okay. So you can go to my, you can also go to my blog, which is attached to my Twitter account. And there is a tweet link in the title of this Periscope video. It's attached to the profile. Massive evidence in it. Massive, massive evidence in it. So, Ever since I started putting in my blog that you can come in to the place that I'm currently at as a result of describing where I'm at in real time, the gang stalking verbal harassment around me dropped 80%, okay, from the next day after I started putting that in my blog at Bonds, at the library. It's been only 20% in reference to what was actually going on before I did that. 
Now, my tape recorder also reflects that as well. And understand this. I have sent some of the copies of my blog to my email account, which isolated when those statements were put in there. You understand? The tape recorder is reflected, but accusations and complaints are picking up. So when they start doing things like accusing you of things and complaining about you, that's done to ban you. Because they know they cannot control people coming in and observing what's going on. Which is what I've been doing now with my blog. So ever since I put that in my blog about three weeks ago, the harassment dropped from 100% to 20%. But the accusations and complaints are periodically now occurring. And this is done to ban you. Okay? Because they can't control who might be coming in and observing what they're doing. So they dropped what they're doing down to 20% and are now periodically using people, including management, to complain about your behavior, to try and provoke you to act out. So you can say, well, you, the target will say, see, because they're trying to get the target to say, well, to think to themselves that you got a lot of nerve to complain to me about this and that when I got, when, when, when I know I'm being gang stalked in your establishment. And they'll act like they don't know what gang stalking is and they'll beg you to talk about it. No, what I'm doing is, what I'm doing is I'm just saying you can research it at Google. Because they want you to talk about it. Because they know you know the truth. They know that you know how you're being harassed in these places. So what they're trying to do is bait you to talk about it. So then when they then continue that event or stage one on a later date and the police come, they can come out and say, well, Miss Williams thinks that people are saying gang stalking around her. Because they know that the police have already filed this falsified police report. Do you understand? That's the gang of gang stalking. The police working with the perpetrators. You see what I'm saying? Now that was a lot to swallow. So let's see if my bank, let's see if my social security direct deposit didn't come in today. Let's see if I am banned from any place I go today, including MTS. Let's see if anybody accuses me of anything anywhere. Let's see if any damage is done to my computers. Any, let's see if anybody tries to steal anything from me, accuse me of anything, approach me, harass me. Let's see if gang stalk and suck my dick is caught being said once. Okay. It's being said around me. I can give two shits about how much a lion SDPD officer. He, he will get right in my face and lie right to my face and try and claim he does not know what gang stalking is. He'll try and claim that what you're saying sounds bizarre. He'll even try and claim that you got issues. And that's a method of gang stalking. You understand? Because that's how they discredit the truth the target's telling by discrediting the target. They'll ignore every bit of evidence. Okay? Absolutely. But participate in techniques that are already all over the internet to be exposed as gang stalking techniques, like calling the target crazy. You understand? Okay. And this is one of the reasons why the business community will try and mentally provoke you to, to uh, uh, they'll accuse you of doing something you're not doing. Okay. Or they'll accuse you of doing something like one time I was in Jack in a Box and I threw a napkin after I wiped my, I wiped my face after I got done eating the last bite of my taco. And I wiped my face and I went like this. I literally went like this and I threw my napkin literally two feet from me because there was a trash bin right there. And what it did was it hit the edge of it and dropped on the floor. So then I literally started walking towards it to pick it up. And the Jack in the Box manager said, you need to stop throwing things in here or we're, gonna, we're, we're not going to let you in here no more. Okay? While people are standing around me giving me these really mocking looks. Okay? Now I had already caught gang stalking occurring on video and, and many, many audio files in that jack-in-the-box on Rose Pans and Nimitz. So I called the police and told the police how I'm being gang stalked in that place. And they went inside and acted like they were, um, I told them that people were getting around me and saying gang stalk, oh my God, and gang stalk weird, including management. So they played their role. They went inside and acted like they were having a conference with them. And then they came out and said, well, the customers in there are saying it was your fault. And the employees are saying that it's your fault. So I guess everybody's wrong and you're not. Maybe we better get some help for you. Now this occurred, if memory serves me correctly, in October 2013. Hear me out. I tape recorded that whole event and put it online. You can go to YouTube and type in uh, Learning Disabled Woman Exposes San, uh, San Diego Police Gross Negligence of Duty or SDPD Gross Negligence of Duty. Listen to it very carefully concerning what I state to them. Okay. Now, then you can go 
to YouTube and type in Learning Disabled Woman Exposes San Diego Prosecutors and Public Defenders Saying Gang Stalk Suck My Dick Oh My God The very thing that I told that police officer two years before They were caught in the courthouse Three prosecutors, up to three and four prosecutors and at least three public defenders Now you really think about what I'm telling you This Jack in the Box is at Rosecrans and Nimitz Boulevard the police were called on them by me in October 2013. The San Diego prosecutors and public defenders were called on 10-23-2015 and on other dates. Doing the very thing that I told these SDPD officers that I was dealing with and enduring in that jack in the box Now that video was already published in, on YouTube in 2013. When I made the video showing the audio of the date of the prosecutors and public defenders being caught, it flat out shows the tape recorder of the date they were being caught. I think that people can make something like that up. Make something like that up out of the blue. For one, that's a totally, you know, that would be a totally bizarre thing for anybody to think up out of the blue if they were trying to make up a lie. Okay, because most people don't even know about gang stalking. Okay. So do you really think that something like that's possible? And then, and then catching it hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times in between before the prosecutors and public defenders were caught. That right there in itself should tell you this shit's going on in businesses. Absolutely. So, we're going to see if anything that I've ever predicted on, on YouTube videos, tweets on Twitter, video files, and audio files occur concerning me, about me, around me, towards me, against me. And that absolutely includes the plaza over by UTC, where my bank's at. Okay. And MTS... There's multiple victims here in, in San Diego that are exposed in Metropolitan Transportation Services, MTS. Okay, so you better research that extensively. All right, I got to go. This video turned out to be longer than I wanted it to be. This is a prediction video. Let's see if I am banned from Bonds, Coffee, Bean, and Tea Leaf, Carl's Jr. Let's see if anybody bothers me at any place I go to sit down to eat at today in that neighborhood, Genesee and Governor Road. Let's see if anybody bothers me where I'm parking my bike and locking it up. Let's see if anybody bothers any function of my bike or bike lock. Let's see if anybody bothers me inside the bathrooms or anywhere in any store that I'm at, no matter where I'm at, at all times, including cigarette breaks. I literally got to make these predictions because of the... Because of the craziness of this crime. All right, I got to go. I'm running behind schedule. Thank you for listening and stay tuned because as long as everything goes... Oh, and by the way, if anything occurs and I cannot make a Periscope video before, during, or after the event, I'm predicting that as well. I tried to access Periscope seven times yesterday from La Jolla Villa Square Drive while I was there and could not. Just making a statement, that's all. All right, so fellow American citizens, research this crime, including cell phone tracking and hacking to gang stalking. Got to get San Diego, California. My name is Leslie Williams. These predictions are in effect.